lost connection, try switching Wi-Fi's. Okay. At least today they're notifying viewers. How about that? Shoo-bop, shoo-bop, Hello, hi, hi, hi. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm sharing. I'm going to start in just a few minutes. I feel like that name looks familiar. Hey, I'm going to get started in just a minute tonight. Um, we are just going to expand on... Um, <clears throat> what we were doing and what we were discussing on Wednesday about feminine energy, getting connected because we are going into this, um, this portal, the seven, seven portal. That's the seven, 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 eight portal portal. The seven, seven portal. That's the seven, 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 eight portal. I am waiting for Camille. Hi, everybody. Hi, 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 hi. Anybody, uh, you know, you guys tonight is it's the the new moon. So anybody out there, Grandmaster? <laughs> hi. Um, anybody out there actually do anything for the new moon tonight? What are you guys out here manifesting? Like it's got a little bit of a delay going on. I'm trying to Here we go. Here we go. Choo choo, choo choo. All right. So, are you guys out here manifesting? Doing any magic work? Any candle work? Are you guys setting any intentions? Um, for this new moon. Like, I can see you. I saw you come in the room, Camille, but I can't, um, see you to, like, add you. Um, it's asking me to add strangers. Hey, girl, I love the <laughs> name. Um, let's see. I don't know what I know, but I don't know how to um um li listen, I see you're here, but I don't remember how to bring you up so I can hear you. We only ever did that that one night. So, like, I don't have, like, host and guest um, options. Uh, it says manage. So, if you're a moderator, you would think that live shopping access. I'm getting it together, y'all. Do you have to send me a request or something? I don't know. Because last time, so if I click on you, um, it's not saying nothing. Nothing. How did I invite y'all up here last time? Wait, drawing and... I don't have drawing access. I don't have guest access. I don't know what that's about. Usually I see the box that asks me to request to join. Okay, well maybe when, as we continue to talk, it's gonna pop up, cause like you should already be an admin and somebody else's thing popped up and said join that I don't even know, they didn't even have a name. So it is what it is. So what are you, um, 
what are you guys manifesting for this new moon? Anybody? There's a lot of people popping through here. Oh, thank you for following, Cindy. It's listing me as a moderator on my end, but I'm unable to interact. Huh. What is that about? Look, there's nobody in here. Hey, Diana. Die. She's like 100% ignoring me. Okay, there she is. She joined. How, can, do you have um, access or like you're a moderator as well. Like how do you, how do I bring you up? Can you see any of that? Like what is, what? like I can't even bring her up to talk. She's, you know, remember last time when I brought her and Tori up and you, no, it wasn't y'all, were, you weren't on it. You know how you see other people like the little boxes and they're talking, yada, 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 yada. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but you don't have that down here. Like, that, that option's not down here. That people's live. It's... That's what I'm saying. I don't understand because we've done it before. But how you do it? You did it I don't. Child. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew, I would be doing it, right? I would be doing it. We have so many people just popping in and popping out. But we're going to start talking about uh, feminine energy and the new moon real soon. But I'm just trying to get us set up. So, so you just keep tapping that screen while we figure Yes, out. can y'all just tap the screen? If you guys tap the screen, it sends it out. More people come in and we're going to get started real soon. I'm just trying to figure out how to get um, people up. So before though, like somebody else was already in here and it said, look, it says invite so-and-so mm -hmm. to join live as a guest. So that's how I got them up before. So is there something that you have to do? No. You can't. Is that who you're trying to bring up? No, I don't know that person. Do they have to have, be at a certain level or they're not able to go live? Is that the same person you brought up before? I don't know. I had Camille up and Tori, and oh, neither of them so have enough people okay. to go live. So, like, I don't know. Is there anybody out there that can help us? <laughs> okay, so in the meantime, I'm just clicking buttons. <laughs> Girl. Um, so I'm able to share, promote, wave, sub, send subscriptions to others. Um, okay. Oh, hell no. That says 25. Um, here we go. Five. Confirm. What you doing? That was a gold thing. It just popped up. But I, I still don't know how to do it. It's oh, because that person popped right in and that so thing popped weird. up. So what's that about? But I can't press any of these buttons down here that says add a host. It's paused. It says I'm paused? No, my fault. It says live is paused. It says I'm paused? No, my fault. It says live is paused. But I'm not paused anymore. All right, so let's just talk about it. Camille, what are you manifesting to the whole energy of this, of this month, the whole energy of this, of this month? She said, I manifest to be on live right now. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Also, it keeps glitching. I know. So I like joined Wi-Fi, got off of Wi-Fi, trying yeah, to see. Oh. Will be back soon. 
What's going on? Tell you, pause. Um, uh, TikTok be smoothing me out, don't it? <laughs> it just be smoothing me out. Her name is one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, just, no. just follow me. She got a picture. <laughs> Photo there because, it uh, is a photo. Okay, see how invite to join the live as a guest. Click them and see. Okay, how did you do that? You have to click. Yeah. Go live together is turned off. Yeah. You. So that's something you did. Girl, back your head up. Back up. So let stop me see. it before you hurt yourself. See this child. Unlock live access. Go on there with your cousin. Go on. Bye bye. Yeah. How did I? This is wild. Cause there's the button that says unlock live access. After going live, some of the creators have bought. So. Now it says congratulations on unlocking. Aaliyah! Okay, so it says I've unlocked it. It also it keeps glitching. Let me see. It says go live together is turned off. Um, well, sorry y'all. I gotta figure out how to fix this. Go live to together on TikTok. During the live, tap the multiple multiple guest button screen. Tap invite. But see, mine's is turned off. I, it's not. So did you do something where TikTok turned it off, or did you turn it off? I don't know. It says Unlock. check requirements. Unless go live. On you. Go live for thirty minutes. Go live on three separate days. So I haven't been live three days. Remember, I I was, mm -hmm. but I think that's but just it's in general. It's, blue, it's, it's all blue. checked. You got green check marks. So now you can invite guests. Check requirements. I'm meeting all the requirements that it's not allowing. Thank you, Camille. Let but I don't know. If, like, the what? other people have to have requirements now. The people who you can invite? You're to invite. Okay, I'm just... But you have it turned off somehow. Okay, I'm turning... You know what? I had studio on... Okay, y'all, I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to come back and try it again. Because I have no idea. For the other person. Wait, there's somebody's talking to us. Let me see. Go live. Just start with your topic. Alright, I'll figure it out. Why can't I? Oh, well, look, it went away. Real time performance. All right, well. So, see, somebody else, is, so then they, they have it up here, but then it says go live is turned off, but it doesn't give me. Hmm. And I have checks. And I don't know. So aren't there supposed to be okay, so Camille has a badge, but I'm trying to see we can try to figure it out later. Yeah. 
All right, well, I'll just start talking. I just wanted y'all to talk, be able to talk with me instead of me just running my mouth as per usual. <clears throat> so, um, but of course my, my ADHD kind of thing is kicking in and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> All right, Alexa. Mm -hmm. Oh, the uh, salt bowl? Oh, yeah. Grandma grandma yeah. refilled the salt and put it back. Okay. Uh, Alexa, play candle playlist. Shuffling in Canto. Original motion Which? picture sound. She said in Canto. Jermaine Franco and in Canto. I don't think so. Alexa. On Amazon Music. Al Alexa. Alexa. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, is it gonna be that kind of night? Alexa, play candle playlist from Apple Music. Oh my God, she played Encanto. She said she can't find my playlist. Okay, Alexa, play light playlist from Apple Music. Oh my God, light from Apple Music. All right, all right. So, anyway, <laughs> is it just me and you now, Camille, with all of this going on? Um, let me put up, look, now watch, I'm trying to do something else, and I need to just, so, I want to, huh, I did put a welcome message in, listen, There's a welcome message. Uh uh. What? <laughs> you said, What am I doing? Do you see yourself? Yes, I can <laughs> I can't stand her. <laughs> Do you see what I'm seeing? This one down is not even on that fence. Yo, and it was just in here. Like, we used this yesterday. And now it don't fit. Here we go. There we go. So, tonight's the new moon. And we are in the new moon of Cancer. So we have a couple of portals going on this, this month, right? The first set of portals is on the 7th and the 8th. And the second uh, portal is on the 27th. And then we have a portal on the 29th. So this energy of um, cancer uh, and the new moon in, just in the portal is about... Here, I put some of the information here. Your, time for you to focus on self-acceptance, exploring your sensual um, sensations and releasing old beliefs and seeing yourself in a new light. So because that's the energy of these portals, not just one of them, but all of them, I'm dedicating this time to, I've got a class that's coming out about uh, reconnecting with your divine feminine energy. We've got the portal that you can join for $7 so that you can be a part of manifesting this um, new energy, being able to accept, embody, embrace your sensuality, your sexuality. Oh, hey, Yolanda. And um, uh, being able to embrace, as I'm manifesting a medical director and an additional source of income. So, um, if you want to join, uh, the portal is $7 and you get into Goddess University. There's a whole um, little space just for that where we can chat. Um, I'm going to be posting things that you guys can do tomorrow to get ready for that portal. 
and uh, for the other two portals that come up that are coming up this month and I can answer any questions and then on the 7th in the evening I'll go live and everybody it's a collective um, service so everybody's in the same jar with three different candle burns but what we're really looking for and what the energy that we're in is connecting to our divine feminine energy um, I just went on the site and set everything up I'm excited oh good 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 yeah I'm excited too because I have been waiting I've tried a couple of different spaces for us and it just didn't allow for the level of communication in this new app I'll be going live um, twice a week so if you're in one of the goddess schools then um, I go live like once a month for with uh, magic training, manifesting training. I do energy healing and feminine energy training. So that happens in the app once a month. And then I do, or once a week actually, but one of those topics happens every month. And then I go in and just do other, I'll be doing other lives, other pop-ups, other meditations, morning meditations, um, all that kind of stuff. So this app is really, really allowing for all of that. And I am super, super excited and ready for it because, um, you know, I love talking to you guys and that's a way to have access to me and get questions answered and get support and all that kind of stuff in a way that we have not had before. So I'm thrilled about that. And one of the classes that one of the first live classes we'll be doing in there is um, for this portal on the 27th. And it's, I don't want to lie to y'all about the name. <laughs> so I'm going to get the exact name. Right. So it's a two-part class, and it's called Pussy Wisdom. And I, I volleyed with the name of the class. But it's called Pussy Wisdom. It's the 27th and the 29th. And it is about leading with love and your feminine energy. Right? Learning how we talked for a while. Um, when was it? Wednesday? About connecting with your divine feminine energy. And we had some people in here who were having some... Um, health problems in their vag in their vagina right so uterus fibroids all of those types of things everything in that area is about a lack of connection to divine feminine energy so we talked about some of the things that can be done and if you are interested I actually recommend it uh, at least one book I remember which was pussy um, and I made that book available, so it is available in the free Visiting Goddess uh, library. Huh? Girl, I said pussy like 600 million times in the last one. So, <laughs> um, so there's that. And then um, another book that I recommend is uh, Women That Run With Wolves. I need some insight on releasing some old limiting beliefs. So in this energy that we're in, the we're in tonight is actually the new moon, right? Happened peaked. So we still it peaked about 630 today. So we still have two more days of a strong new moon energy. And so what you want to do is this is not necessarily like the best energy for um, releasing in these days. This is about, okay, this is what it was. These are what the old beliefs were, but focus on what the new beliefs are gonna be, right? How am I moving forward? What is my connection to my feminine energy? What is my connection to my pussy? Do I even have a relationship with my pussy? Because it's different. You know, you derive pleasure through her. Excuse me. But do you have a relationship with her outside of the service of, you know, either giving pleasure or receiving pleasure? So that's one of the things that we were talking about earlier in the week where when you have a real relationship 
right, and there's a connection, then your your connection and that relationship with your divine feminine energy, the connection with your pussy, is connect, it connects to your heart. So then it's not just, you know, being led solely by pussy, right? It is being led by your heart and, and your pussy. Everything is one. And so how you move, how you make choices, how you engage with people changes. And you don't have to be physically um, externally aroused in order to tap into that energy. So if you can imagine like one of the times when you were literally the most turned on, hot, ready, bothered, kind of loving it right on the edge of not having any penetration or anything like that, but you were just in the energy of the readiness and the excitement um, for pleasure. And so when you imagine that, if you can remember that, that's the energy that you want to create from. That's the energy that you want to manifest from. That's the energy that um, creates anything and everything, right? Because that's the energy that creates life. It's, that's the energy that you want to learn how to tap into. That's the energy that you want to tap into, tune into, fine tune, um, and then move from there. Make your decisions from there. Create your desires from there. Be It keeps you in a receptive mode. You can't be tuned in, turned on, hot, bothered, sexy, and sensual and not be in a receptive mode, right? Because that's just, it is what it is. And so during this time, until we get into next week, journal about what gets you there. Talk about what will take you there. Not with a partner. Um, and we talked about self-pleasure. And I you know, definitely recommended, like, if you're using a toy, stop for a little while. And learn how to do that on your own. Because sometimes the toys, they will desensitize. You can get that sensation back for the most part, but it takes some practice. And then even if you want to kind of alternate every once in a while, that's fine. But it shouldn't be like the main, the main thing because it, you do lose a little bit of, of sensation. And then it takes more work, whether you're solo or with a partner, to get that level of sensation. But when you learn how to, to generate that in and of yourself, for yourself, without any stimulation, uh, external stimulation... Manifest manifestations materialize faster things show up people show up circumstances uh mountains move people move jobs change people get fired like houses you know become empty everything becomes available absolutely everything becomes available to you in that energy and so we're going to be talking about in class how do you get to that energy one of the, the best things that I think um, someone asked me, like, how do you reconnect, right, to that energy? And I said, you need to do mirror work with your pussy. That was, like, if you don't do anything else, and it would be, um, it would actually be, um, if you're doing the mirror work, do the whole Pono Pono exercise. So that's kind of like the recap from last week, right? Start there so that you can make the connection. Um, oh, she's not talking to me. Um, moving forward, though, get the book. Women Who Run With Wolves, um, Pussy, all of those are in the uh, Visiting Goddess Library explore those ideas there was one other book i put in here today and i was like this is probably a good book from what i've read i have not fully read the book but from the portions that i've read let me go to the library real quick and get the name of it because if you are not in there you should still 
where's the library? Here we go. Uh, love your lady landscape. So I would try, uh, L Lisa Lister is the, um, yep, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. That's Ho'oponopono, thank you. Um, love your lady landscape. So you can get it in the Visiting Goddess Library and just download it for free as a PDF and then order it later or whatever you wanna do. Um, but it, those, those three books are really good places to start. We are in this energy. You don't have to do this only in this energy. Hey, hey, baby. Um, but this is the optimum time to do it. This is going to be the best time to get started with it. And um, it's going to change the trajectory of your quality of life how you're able to do everything, right? They say what, how you do anything is how you do everything. So when you start, when this becomes part of who you are and it, it is how you do things, then it will be how you do everything. And we'll get a little bit into, you know, um, embodiment and things like that. But um, are you guys have any questions? Tell me what you're manifesting right now um what you're working on let's talk about those things and anybody who's new who wants to join the portal it's again it's seven dollars for the portal um and that's sunday night to cash out and your email so what i want to do is while i'm thinking about it I want to give you guys some codes to work with in this new moon energy. <clears throat> so, oh, but but also from the, the previous live, right? Anybody that is in menopause, pre-menopausal, um, having menopausal issues, I want to, new clients, successful business, um is this a good moon for yes this is a wonderful no definitely in a new moon you can manifest anything right it's the portals that are about your connection to your feminine energy so let me be clear so tonight is the new moon new moons manifest anything that you want but um the portals that are happening this month are excellent and they're really they're the ones that are focused on the feminine energy and that reconnection okay so uh 31 space 31 space 798 so if someone would type that in here because that is the goddess code for anyone who is having menop is in menopause in a ugh, menopause <clears throat> any issues with menopause um pre-menopausal right why is that important because Whatever you're using, any bottles, any anything, you can charge them with this goddess code to help you with this this process because you want you want to reconnect to your divine feminine energy. If we're having issues with menopause, if we're having um, even period PMS symptoms, all of those things are a sign to us that there's a level of disconnect level of disconnection somebody earlier in the week had asked about yeast infections so i'm going to share the goddess code for yeast infection um two three four two space one nine seven it's two three four two <clears throat> space one nine seven that is if you're having a lot of yeast infections so the way that i would use that is that i would put it i would write it on a leaf an herb something like that and i would put it in my water i would also um create do like a spiritual bath so the herbs that are really good for your yoni um boil those let them steep in a pot with the codes in it write the codes and put it on there then you're going to strain that off so you're not putting the actual herbs in can somebody answer the door 
and um, strain that off and then um, pour that concoction into your bath water. So now it's charged, right, with the coat. <coughs> Excuse me, it's charged with the coat. If you are using any cream, if you decide whatever it is that you're using um, as a treatment for yeast, write it on the bottle, okay? Uh, we talked a little bit about like cyst and fibroids. So, uh, did somebody type that code? The yeast infection code? Yeah. Camille typed the menopause. Will you type the one for yeast? It's 2342 space 197. 2342 197. So that's the goddess code to heal yeast infections. Um, also, we it was it's 2342 197 together. 2342 space 197. Okay. And then we talked about fibroids and cysts. And that code is 83 space 83 space 456. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so use those codes. Um, this would be a good month to use codes for your root chakra, right? The root chakra um, is right there in that, um, at the base, at, right there where the vagina is, all of your feminine energy and connections. What, where did all this stuff come from? Um, so using some codes for removing blocks from your root chakra would be ideal. So I've got two chakra codes and then we'll move on to some other topics. But um, our conversation the other night really inspired me. So the chakra code for, or the goddess code for optimizing and creating balance in your root chakra is 13 space 23 space 251 you didn't put yeast on that other code hmm? it doesn't say yeast <laughs> the goji berries in here are getting sucked up in my straw 13 23 251 to optimize and balance your chakras and then 10 space 010 space 5856. That's to create balance in that root chakra. Thank you, Camille. And then you got that other one, 10 space 010 space 5856. So those codes, uh, say the second one again, it's 10 space 010 space 5856. And that uh, removes blockages in the root chakra. So all of those, you can use that with all of the rituals that are in the book. You can use those, like I said, um, you can charge your water and do a spiritual bath and sit in it. It's going to be really, really powerful for you. Um, you can, um, whatever cream, moisturizer, oil, whatever you use down there, you can charge it with these codes. Do we get it? Yeah. And if you want more codes, all the codes are in the book. 80% of your life goal is complete. <laughs> yay! Thank you. Yay, yay, yay. 
It says check. Let's see. Live goal. Oh, I achieved my goal. How about that? Thank you, guys, because there's not that many people in here. So, I didn't realize that um, it, like, lets me give myself hearts. <laughs> so, um, where can we get the book? If you go to the link in my bio, the, the Goddess Code book is there uh, in the Goddess Shop right now. And it is the PDF version. We've got a print version that is coming out really soon. And um, it'll have more rituals, things that you can do, ways that you can manifest. But right now, literally with everything that's in here, or that's in there, you can manifest just about anything. Um, the print version is going to have a lot more of the health codes in it and not just um, material items or circumstances, things like that. I want to do... It's the new moon, so you know I can't not pull a card or two <laughs> for the for the group. The Goddess University um, app is in the link in my bio. So if you click on it, it will take you right there. You'll be able to see um, all of the individual trainings that are available but you will also uh, be able to get a free membership. It's called a Visiting Goddess membership that will give you access to a lot of uh, free resources. And anytime that I make recommendations on the live, um, I put that information or examples or links or whatever in the Goddess University, um, the Visiting Goddess library. So yeah, you can access it from your laptop. You can or um ios and android no, sorry. <laughs> look is that what that's called yeah <laughs> google? huh the, go uh, the, google. the google play store that's play what it store. is there you go uh so you can use it anywhere and it's awesome as an app but there's a chat feature you know once you're in there definitely come in say hi if you can't find anything there are individuals in there they're called goddess guides and they can answer your questions and you can follow them and um, start conversations and all of that amazing stuff just gonna clear the energy here so I want to see what this portal, what this month. Yay, thank you for the follow. Um, I just want to see what this energy is for us coming into July. And this is, again, this is pretty, uh, this is a collective. It's not for anybody specific. And that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, there you go. Let's see what it says here for us collectively. We've got the world <laughs> and uh, two of winter and the six of summer. So with the world, it means we have the freedom to go in any direction. You can go anywhere, do anything, which is ideal. We are in the new moon, right? Can I subscribe to your TikTok? Yes, please subscribe to the TikTok. <laughs> Um, and so we'll, I'll be updating that soon actually, but what happens is if you are a subscriber and I'm doing card readings, you get priority, whether it's the free reading or it's the paid reading, um, your questions of course are priority and you get access to some videos that are, um, exclusively, uh, for those who are in the subscriber service and you basically get for a month one on all the different topics right so i teach on and cover um energy healing or healing in general a natural healing um manifesting feminine energy and spiritual magic so our collective reading in here is of course that 
we have a brilliant success. We've got the world card. We've been held back by some indecision, but romance and remembering events differently and things from your childhood. So what this is saying to me on an intuitive level is that if you do this work right, right here, let me get out of the way. Focus on the acceptance and exploring your sensual sensations and releasing the old beliefs and see yourself in a new light. When you do that, right, you break free of the childhood version of you, the things that um, from your past, you let that go. That gives you the ability to go in any direction, any direction you want to go in. And right now the reason that you haven't moved forward we haven't moved forward collectively we all have got some place some next level that we are trying to get to and go to is because um we are not making the choices that are best for us we keep considering all the other people around us uh before we actually um make a decision and the problem is is that what's best for us and the decision that we have to make is not necessarily the best decision um, or the most comfortable decision for those in our circle that we are trying to accommodate. And so by not moving forward, we're holding our own selves back. But the truth is that has a lot to do with these old beliefs that we're holding about ourselves. So when you do this work, then the world is yours, right? You can go anywhere, you can do anything, be anything, have anything because you've handled that and you've made new decisions, which actually brings me to a really great topic and uh, or I want to talk about it. And I'm so bummed I can't bring people up. <laughs> you always feel attacked. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying it kind of it, it, it hit it hit hard with me too. So, you know. You ain't the only one being attacked, but I don't be ratting myself out like that all the time. So, um, the idea is that I, how we process the concept, right? We believe in, you believe in law of attraction, right? We understand that this is an attraction based universe, which means that whatever, Oh, some lives are filtered to protect the community's experience. <laughs> Fuck off. So we are in an attraction-based universe, which means that everything that is happening to us is because we are a vibrational um, match for it, right? Because everything is vibration. So that means that there is no assertion. We can't live in an assertion based universe if we are in an attraction based universe which means no one can come and insert themselves into your world into your environment into your circumstances into your feelings into your anything your business without you being a match for it to happen so when i was having this conversation with a certain someone the other day um, it's not a new concept for me, but a, it's a concept that I think that we collectively, especially when we're making decisions that are not best for us, but we're doing making decisions that we feel like are best with, for other people, you have to remember that there's no assertion. So when people are driving you crazy, it's because you are a match for it. When people are doing you dirty, it is because you are a match for it. When you are being annoyed, it is because you are a match for it. When people are being unfair or unavailable, it's because you are a match for it. Not because someone has come and inserted themselves uh, into your life or situation or circumstances. It's not possible. That's like living on this planet with gravity and expecting things to go up, right? It, it's not possible because gravity exists. So it, insertion is not possible because the law of attraction exists. So when we're writing in this new moon energy, right? 
when we're writing um, about what it is that we're moving into, about what it is that we want, what it is that we desire, excuse me, understand that's the reason that people say the only thing holding you back is you because there is no assertion. So if you write it and you don't allow for anything other than that, that's why the concept of delusion works because everything only everything you focus on expands and what you're looking at is what exists. If you're not looking at it, it does not exist. It's not part of your reality. Even wherever you are, if there was war in Texas and we didn't live in Texas and nobody told you that there was war in Texas, it simply wouldn't exist. I don't watch a lot of regular, I don't watch regular television at all, right? Um, and I don't really watch a lot of like live shows that would give me an indication of what the weather is or what is happening. So when my children were young, I lived in Kansas and, you know, they have tornadoes. And we sometimes we would go through phases where we would put the TVs in the closet. The tornadoes would be coming through, but because it wasn't part of our reality, it was just rain. We weren't affected. It just wasn't part of our reality. Now, does that mean that people who don't know the tornado is coming that, you know, stops the tornado from hitting? I don't know to be completely honest with you, <laughs> right? That's like, you know, does the tree make a sound if there's no one there to hear it? It's vibration. So if there's nothing for it to bounce off of, it can't make any sound. There are no blocks. If you remember the matrix, like this conversation that I had the other day, the thing that came to my mind was the matrix when he said there is no spoon. Like if you remember that, He's able to bend the spoon because the spoon doesn't really exist. And then he recalled that in, um, right before he went in to save Morpheus, right? Oh. <laughs> so the person I was having that conversation with was, um, was Camille. And uh, just to give you con context on the concept, right? Um she's got she's one of those people that's very personable especially in, in service and make sure to tell the part when i said i feel sorry for anyone who doesn't have a lamiel <laughs> so the concept is is that she sort of has accepted that sometimes in her work environments right somebody doesn't like her somebody mistreats her what have you and it happens like, you know, every job, every so often after she's been there for a while. But as we were talking, because there was a lot of emotions around it, the reality was, and what I was saying to her is that in essence, it happens because it has become part of her belief system. People like me until they don't. <laughs> she just took it. So people or people love me until they don't. That had become part of her belief system. And so what happens? People love her until they don't, right? So then she's at these jobs and she always has the underlying vibration that at some point these people will stop loving me. These people will stop vibing with me or what have you because that is what always happens. But it, it's always happening because that is her belief around it. So as she's going through and she was saying, and I was like, you know, how they're treating you is not fair. What they're doing is not right. All of that is in fact accurate. However, <laughs> you can't change them. There's nothing that can be done. You can change you. The reason that these things are happening to you is because you're a vibrational match for them. Because if you weren't a vibrational match for them, she would never ever have an opportunity to connect with you. 
And I don't know if I've told, <laughs> she said I was spiraling. Yeah. And so, but, and the beauty about it is that she was spiraling, but at the same time, she was willing to hear me out, right? Because sometimes when you're like real, real emotional, you don't, um, you can't hear anything other than the emotions. And when you're open to learning and when you're open to shifting, that's why my mentor program works so well. I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching and it sucked ass because it's like therapy, right? You're having all these issues all week long and then you get in front of your coach and you're like, either you did it right or you did it wrong and, and that's it. So the, I killed that model of coaching and turn it into a mentor program where you end up with the opportunity to talk to me in the moment through our Voxer app. So just like what was happening with Camille, um, she's creating scenarios that haven't, haven't happened. Just like, what's wrong? I can't pin comments. Camille, can you pin a comment just to see if it's, if it's working? Um, so she's spiraling in the moment, but she was able to call and talk to me. And that's how I've changed my, my, my coaching model, right? Because in the moment, now y'all can't call me, but you get, <laughs> let me be clear. But, uh, those in the program have, have access to me via the app, which means you can either text me or leave a voice recording and we can talk back and forth, um, about what's going on so she's in the car she's leaving the job and this is going on and she's feeling like why should she have to change who she is why should she have to do something she said no nope, can't pin um why should she have to let me see if i can be different why does she have to monitor other people it says unlock pin your vlog is on something weird man yeah, I'm going to have to, to figure it out. I was messing with stuff um, on the laptop because I was trying to see if I could go live there instead of on the phone, which I can, but it was confusing. So let me just finish the story. I guess we're not doing no admin work today, y'all. Um, so the concept here is, yes, people were mistreating her. People misjudged her. The woman was kind of picking on her. Um, the situation and how it was coming and how the woman was configuring uh, um, or what's the word? How she... Mm -mm. Does it fit? They're making me do the puzzle thing, y'all. Sorry. Um, how the woman was kind of nitpicking at her and trying to create a situation where it looked like Camille didn't do what she was supposed to do or was created or was a problem. Not fair. Nothing about that was fair. But sitting in the situation of it's not fair. Why is this happening to me? You know, um, I'm not, I don't deserve this. Yes. No, you don't deserve it, but you created it. And that was kind of uh, the aha moment. You don't deserve it. And when you know you don't deserve it, you know you deserve something better, Stop. you can stop creating it. So we make reality for ourselves. Absolutely. Because what is a belief? A belief is nothing more than a thought that you keep thinking over and over again. If you decide that you want to have a new belief system, you change your thought process. And you get what you're looking for. You get what you expect. Anything you focus on expands. So if you're sitting around coming up with the worst case scenarios, guess what? We live in a law of attraction, an attraction based universe, just like we have gravity. The gravity will pull you down. The attraction based universe will bring you what you are a vibrational match to. If you are a match for drama, because you're all about the shit, the shit shows the fuck up, okay? A really good example of this um, also was like, I, my son's father uh, had, it was an awful triangulization. <laughs> what is the word? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? So uh, the ex-wife though, <laughs> she absolutely hated me. 
whatever. Um, she would, for a while, she was a stalker. She put up fake pages of me. She did all kinds of like crazy stuff, right? But these things would only happen and she would only come into my awareness when my vibration was low. When I started to spiral down, when I couldn't focus, when I was, fo when I was focused on the worst, when I was giving in to the negative energy, she would show up and do crazy shit to me. And then when I would get my shit together and remember who I was and move forward in that, then um, she wouldn't be there. She couldn't reach me. We, would, we never cross paths. Like literally, I hear her name now, but like she doesn't even exist in my world, right? I hear her name every once in a while, but it's not in any kind of context that would make us be on the same frequency. As soon as I shifted my frequency, she completely disappeared. How she feels about me, all that kind of stuff became irrelevant. It is you and your energy. When you shift, that's why, you know, I'm trying to think of the, there's a, there's a, a saying that I, I but I can't. If, so you remember the poem, uh, it was called Think, and I don't know who the author is, and it says, if you think you're beaten, you are. If you think, dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in the world we find, success begins with a fellow's will, and it's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. So that's a poem. I learned that poem when I was like in second grade. But the point is, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're right. Right? So it says filter similar. Um, so however you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, that is right. If you shift into, and you do the work and you start to shift and it is work, it's work because this is a habit. We've developed this habit of feeling the worst, thinking the worst. Um, you know, society says prepare for the worst and hope for the best. But if you prepare for the worst and we live in a, an attraction-based universe, you're going to get the fucking worst, right? <laughs> like everything is about you. When you change, everything else around you changes. Um, if, you have, if you watch the law of attraction and they were saying the best way to change, I created a, a negativity loop. Essentially, yes. The best way to get the best out of someone and I have experimented with this one with a certain individual. I've been really trying to grasp that for myself. And it is hard sometimes. It's hard when you feel like you have done, you've been done wrong, you are in a shitty situation, and you have to sit with you and be like, this is about me. And as long as I continue to think about how shitty this is and how wrong I was done, I'm going to continue to be done wrong because at the end of the day, you really can't control anybody other than yourself. And if you change yourself, everything around you changes. All the people, the circumstances, the situations, everything. In the movie, Law of Attraction, they said to focus on the things that you love about a person who you are struggling with in a relationship with. And if that is all you see, that is how they show up for you. I thought that... I. Listen, that part, I was like, yeah, no way. Like a shitty person's a shitty person. The way, the way I broke it was to realize first that it actually was a negative loop. Yeah. So, um, so I tried it, right? There was somebody in my life who, I mean, I cared about, but like 
God, I just, it was just awful. And it was just hard. It get, Over time, it became harder and harder to see them as a good person because it just felt like everything they touched, they fucked up and they made my life harder and blah, 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 blah. So, okay, well, what made you like them to begin with? What are some good qualities, right? And so uh, Abraham, if you guys are familiar with that, um, energy abraham hicks they have a technique called uh, the book of positive aspects right so started to write down um what did i like about them what was good about them uh what did i enjoy doing with them all of those types of things it changed how i feel it changed how i felt it changed how i felt it changed how i felt why is that important? So Camille said, uh, then I changed what I was thinking about because how you feel determines what you do, what you're thinking, your thoughts, right? So you've got to feel better. So writing the positive things about this person made me feel better. So then my the thoughts that started to come to me were more positive thoughts because I was feeling better. And then, lo and behold, this person started acting like, as far as I was concerned, out of character, <laughs> in a good way, but out of character, no less, because um, they were doing the things that I saw them doing, and I started to elaborate on them. And then as soon as I would put that down, they'd go back to, to doing the other stuff, right? Because how I felt about them was shifting. So what you focus on expands and it didn't mean that that person stopped completely doing shitty stuff. They just didn't do the shitty stuff around me because I wasn't a match for it. Does that make sense? I wasn't, you know, when people go, I'm not here for that. You're, if you're not there for it vibrationally, energetically and emotionally, you just don't get it. You're, and, and literally you could be in the same place with another person and that person can be on the bullshit and can notice all the negative stuff that's going on while you are standing right next to them noticing all the positive things going on because you're just on a different vibration and you're in the same place the people don't really change you see what you are a match for you get what you are a match for So the ability for Camille to make the shift and to change how she was thinking, um, you know, it was helpful that she had somebody on the phone that could talk to her and help change how she was feeling in that moment when she started to feel a little bit better. And it's not a, a, a one and done thing, right? So she started feeling better. She started having better thoughts. The conversation went. And then the habit of the old belief would pull her back. And then she would be like, fuck these people. You know what I'm going to do? And I'd be like, take a deep breath. And then she's like, yeah, I'm going to take a deep breath. And, and then I told her, just start tapping on the thymus, right? Tell it makes you take a deep breath and you just start to relax. And then we did, she did some head tapping and, and all of those types of things. And um, she'd go back into feeling better. And then the positive emotions would come and the thoughts, the positive thoughts would come. And that's how you shift. But that's how you shift everything. So um, I think maybe Simone had said she was struggling to grasp the concept for herself. It's a constant, it's a constant shift until you, you, each time you shift in, you stay longer. And then you shift yourself back in and you stay longer. And you don't have to be hard on yourself that you're out of it. The very fact that you realize that you're out of it allows you to know that there's growth, right? You have an awareness and it's a constant shift. You have to decide all day, every day. And then one day you'll wake up and realize, 
okay, I'm not making this decision every 30 minutes that I'm going to live this way, that I am going to be successful, that I'm going to be prosperous, that, you know, things are going to be easy for me. I don't have to do that shift every 30 minutes. I'm doing that shift like maybe every couple of hours. Sometimes you get, then you get to the point where it's like, okay, I do work in the morning, I do work in the evening, and I can sustain it for, you know, for the day. And then you realize that, hey, I've been in this vibe all day. Like I woke up like this, right? (laughs) So, and you can hold it. And there's always going to be contrast, but that's how you grow. I dumped a hole in my chest, y'all. She did. She was like, oh my God, where else can I tap? Because I'm sure I have a bruise on my chest. And I could hear, I could hear her (laughs) on the phone. So she started tapping her head and that helped. So it's a consistency thing. So the thing is though, doing your hair is a consistency thing, right? Brushing your teeth is a consistency thing right? (laughs) Um, Doing your makeup is a consistency thing. How you feel should be just as important and worthy of that consistency as brushing your teeth, washing your face, eating food. Instantly felt relief from the head tapping though. Yeah, she did. So you make it part of who you are. It's, it's part of what you do. You know, it's like, you know, I get in the sauna and I'd like to be more consistent with the sauna because it feels good. At the same time, tapping and uh, adjusting through the emotions of things makes me feel divine. And so you ever get up and things start happening in your day and you haven't brushed your teeth yet and all day long you're like or for the hour or two before you get to actually go and brush your teeth you're like oh, i gotta go brush my teeth Mm-mm. and the first chance you get you go brush your teeth it needs to be like that sometimes there's and there's also going to be times when you're sad right being sad and being being sad to release something and being low vibrational is two different things. Sometimes you need to release, sometimes you need to let go and the body releases through crying. Um, Sometimes you do feel low because you've unlocked another level of things you need to release and it's surfacing and you may be revisiting some of that. And you just need to know that this is the process and be willing to let it move through you. Um, A good thing to do during that time is dance. Dance slow, dance and cry. If you are alone, dance and scream into pillows, beat on pillows, let it come up and out. And you're gonna instantly feel not just a little bit better, you're going to feel a lot better, right? Because you've released some, so you're going to go back to where you were and then some because you've allowed yourself to fully release. So um, sitting in it for too long has the opposite effect. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, what you focus on expands. Keep tapping the screen so we can get to 10K hearts, y'all. So yeah, It will have the opposite effect because we also in this universe have a the law of resonance right so if that's what you're focused on that's what's expanding that's what you resonate with other sad people will show up um i did what last year last year here before um Bumble had uh has a friends app right you know get to know more people in your area blah 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 get on the app and I was meeting talking to people great conversation but you know really wasn't clicking with a lot of women and one woman I started talking to her she was really really a nice woman but I noticed that um she was struggling she was going through some um relationship stuff that I had been through so I could relate right (laughs) I could totally relate And I thought, well, here's my opportunity to be the listening ear and the support that I felt like I didn't really have. 
all the time with my relationship, blah, blah, blah. But as we went through things, I remembered, you know, through the conversations with her and when she would call and what we would talk about, like, we can't be friends. Why? Because of the law of resonance. I've done that, been there, done that. I know what that's like. And I, and allowing her and holding space for her to release that with me was going to put me back in a resonance with it because I felt so much for her, right? I could identify so much. And so we couldn't be friends anymore Um, for my own health (laughs) and well-being. Not because she wasn't a great person, but I just could not sit in that energy and continue to have conversation after conversation about um, that kind of stuff. Because eventually you resonate with it and then it becomes part of your personal vibrational frequency. Now, in some situations, you your vibration can be steadfast and it can be high enough to where you're not affected fully especially if it's not continuous or you can have the effect where you your frequency can raise someone else's frequency if that's how you feel and that's what you're going through then you know by all means but because i already resonated so deeply with the relationship situation she was in it was just it was too close for comfort, you know, for me. So I'm not saying that everybody who needs help and needs you to hold space for them, don't do it. Um, because a lot of times your positivity and your your vibration can help uplift them. And that's okay because you need to, sometimes you need to uplift your friends and sometimes they need to uplift you, right? It goes, it's a give and take um, kind of situation. So nothing wrong with that that's healthy but if you feel like someone's going to lower your vibration you've got to really tune in to how you feel and if i'm having a day where i'm struggling i'm not answering the phone right i'm not talking to people i'm not texting people i'm canceling everything I'm fucking canceling everything. Why? Because I'm on, I know I'm on the edge. And so what I'm going to put my time and attention to is into things that are either going to um, fortify me so that my vibration can raise. Or if I know that I'm just moving through something that's kind of heavy that I need to release, I am kind of creating this cocoon for myself so that I can have the emotions and release the emotions. So then the next day I can get up and go on, you know, about my life and do the things that I need to do. Um, And then, you know, sometimes, you know, shit, shit happens. Just watched your video about locking energy. Divine timing. Thank you. You are so welcome. Um, And then that's the other thing. When you get your energy high, lock it. If you are trying to work through something, manifest something, or what have you, and you've got to go be around people, lock your energy. If you have to take phone calls from people that you know are lower vibration, lock your energy. Those are the things that you, those are the tools that you need to use to protect yourself, right? Uh, which is why it's part of what I share. Get that energy off of you. If you've been around people and they are projecting a lot on you, you can simply use the energy, the energy technique, right, to um, get the energy off of you and then lock your energy. And then your vibration is not negatively impacted. And what you're trying to manifest is not negatively impacted. I got these goji berries at the bottom of my... (laughs) I'm trying to drink it without sucking up a goji berry. So I could just eat them. Okay, what's in the glass? It is... Diana is blocking left and right. (laughs) Um... 
moringa it's just moringa tea that's got some hibiscus in it and i put some goji berries in there that's it tonight now what the other night i was sipping on some on some good stuff but um <laughs> not that this is not good stuff but you know it was more of a way more of a hoppy juice than this one this is my my anti-aging formula so let's see where are we gonna make it to 10k like <laughs> You guys have any questions out there? I know earlier in the week we did some, we talked about like some emotions that you need to let go of if you are experiencing any health issues. Um, I do have my notes up. So if you are having health issues and I can look up a goddess code for you. Um, if you guys want to join the portal, the collective portal uh, for the seventh, it's $7. Um, the portal itself is cash up only and um this portal is about let me move out of the way so we're releasing the old beliefs and seeing yourself so that you can see yourself in a new light and we are focusing on self-acceptance and exploring your sensual and um sensual side so what that's the energy of this the the cancer in this month of july right is about your sensual side it is about changing how you view yourself it is about loving yourself it is about accepting yourself and so that's the energy this is the new moon that is really what you should be manifesting is how you see yourself where are you going what is life going to be like and when you're manifesting you get how you feel about what you're manifesting so if you're asking for a million dollars and feel like it's probably never gonna come you're right that's the whole reason i recited that poem because you're right however it is whatever it is you're absolutely um you're right about <laughs> so you need to get you feel your way through how about that? Feel your way through everything. Thank you, Jen. Um, welcome. Is that Natalie? Um, you get how you feel. Whatever it is, uh, what are some of the ways or practices we can do to facilitate, to facilitate feeling your way through to your manifestations i love that feel your way through yeah that's how you shift right because you become aware of your feelings so say let's say you're working on you need a new job and you in this moment feel like this is so hard it's not going to happen i'm working so like why is it taking so long all of those kind of things those are feelings right and when you take action from a, from those feelings as that as your base you're not going to get anywhere so that's probably not the best time to send out resumes to call about jobs to go for interviews things like that when you wake up and feel like ah oh, today is a day i'm going to get a job or i'm going to find the lead that's going to lead me to the job like when you're in that energy that's when you send out the resumes that's when you just walk into places and talk to people because you're you feel good you feel good about it you are in vibrational alignment with what you want so if you have a business and something doesn't sell how do you feel about that product feel your way through it and Camille is on here. She can attest with you. Like, I've been on the phone talking to her and feeling like, ugh, this is, sales are so hard. And then we start talking and I'm, and I'm literally actively making the shift, right? And then I just start talking like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Sales are about to come through and my cash up's just going to go off and blah, 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 blah. And this was a few years ago, several years ago. And we would still be on the phone and, and literally with not even within 30 minutes to an hour, 
the cash app starts going off and exactly what I need starts coming through, you make the decision. You make the decision and feel your way to it. So sometimes you make a decision and the decision is different than how you feel right now. But when I say feel your way through it, what can I do to feel a little bit better right now? How can I feel a little bit better? And so if you're feeling good and you're trying to get to a better place, but you do feel good, then you can ask things like, um, or make statements like, what universe, show me how good my life can get. Universe, show me how much better this can be. Show me our God, source, whatever terminology you use. Show me how much better this can be. Uh, I just started, show me how fun this can be, right? Lofty questions. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if, wouldn't it be nice if is um, a lower start, like a, a lower starting point, right? So like if you are not feeling good and you're trying to shift into feeling better, then uh, wouldn't it be nice if, we used to play that game a lot, right? Um, <laughs> because life changes for you. So I used to play wouldn't it be nice if a lot, now, because where my energetic minimum is, wouldn't it be nice mm, if <coughs> for where I am now, wouldn't it be nice is rarely appropriate because I already know it. It's nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, how much can show me how much better this can get and now i know things can get better but i want it to be more fun right so you got to everything doesn't apply at the same at the same time right so i enjoyed when i remembered when um wouldn't it be nice if those are great statements to use beginner statements to lofty questions uh, you can go and be more specific with a lofty question like, you know, why do I sell out of, you know, my X, Y, and Z product every day? Why am I, uh, why do I get 100 orders a day? Why do I have so many people, you know, trying to get in my program? I have to hire extra people. Like you can get more specific when it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, stick with the general. And these statements, I remember when I enjoyed it when, um, wouldn't it be nice if? So <clears throat> the reason I also say wouldn't it be nice if is uh, um, when you're kind of feeling probably at the lowest, <coughs> excuse me, is because it still puts it out like it, like it's, you know, wouldn't it be nice if it would happen? But if that's where you are, and wouldn't it be nice shifts you into the possibility that, yeah, it would be nice. What would that be like? Ultimately, you would want to be able to put it in the past tense, right? Or you want to go to the present tense. So wouldn't it be nice is like maybe somewhere far out there. Um, but if you can get it in the present tense, like this is what it is, you're making a decision. Now, when you say, you remember when I started getting like 100 orders a day, it was so crazy fun. And, you, you know, you could talk to yourself. But um, putting it behind you means it's already happened. It's like the pray rain technique. If you, the Indians needed it to rain, because it was so hot so they gave thanks and they partied and they did the dance and celebration of all the amazing rain and then the rain came <coughs> because the rain comes to match the frequency that they're on it's a fun and active way to change the frequency yeah and especially if you have someone to do it with but literally in the morning you can just put a list of lofty questions like you know why am i so beautiful why am i so this why is life so easy why are things coming to me so easily you know all of those type of things and say those things while you brush your teeth right um yeah so once you can get it behind you, past tense, 
it's easier for it to show up because you've shifted all the way from uh, how do you stop yourself from comparing it to your past so if you're thinking about are you thinking that it was better in the past or like you've done this before if you give me a little bit I can be more specific if you could give me a little more information because here's the thing you're com you're comparing to the past like you did it like maybe what kind of thing was it <laughs> that you're comparing so I don't know if it's like how you look if it's yeah it was better I missed that life hmm. well what about that life do you miss right because you have to know when you are saying i missed that life and you're trying to go back to the way things were it's like you lack the belief that it's going to that life is going to be better than that than it than it was back then you can't go backwards and forward at the same time right because what happens you're you're stuck you're not moving so you've got to um, realize and create a new belief is that it gets better. That was good, right? That was shit. That was the shit back then. But it gets to be better. The better it gets, the better it gets. It's going to continue to be better, get better. Um, that lets you know that even more is coming because that's old. But it is a belief system shift. So <clears throat> I would start to shift the belief with a lofty statement. Why does my life get better and better every day? Why does my life or whatever aspect of your life that from the past that you're talking about or thinking was better than now? Just create those questions that will uh, eventually help you establish the belief that the best is coming. Or better yet, this is the best. Today's the best day I've ever had, right? Then you wake up tomorrow. Today is literally the best day of my life. Why is this the best day of my life? Why is this the best day of my life? And eventually you start to believe like every day is the best day of your life. And then shit starts happening. And it's like, oh my God, it really is like the best day of my life. And then tomorrow gets to be better. Tomorrow, yes, there's power in the tongue. Tomorrow gets to be better. That's a great belief system too. Like today is amazing and tomorrow gets to be even better. That Build that in your, in your uh, right personal frequency and you will change your belief system and things will start to show up. Start asking, show me how much better this is than that was. Show me how much better it is today than yesterday and things will shift but you can't be stuck if you're looking at yet if you're looking at yesterday and you are trying to go forward you you just end up in this gridlock and there's nowhere for you to go so it doesn't get yay 11k hearts thank you guys so it doesn't get to get, get doesn't get to be any better and during those time periods when you feel good right when you're feeling good and it's feeling good <clears throat> and you're having the time of your life and you're like, oh, this is wonderful. I had a great day. That's where the whole energy medicine and the energy healing comes in, right? You're going to tap right here. Why? Because now in this new frequency, you are going to create new neural pathways and you're going to make this day, this amazing event, your new uh, energetic minimum. So if this is your new energetic minimum, it you don't drop lower than this. Days don't get worse than this. You know what I'm saying? It becomes your new set point. And then you build and you build until now. Um, I have a book. Where is that book? So I wrote this book a long, long time ago. Let me see. Can I get it? Can I get it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what is this? Okay. So I wrote this book a long time ago, which is amazing. And I've actually been reading excerpts. It's not, it's a short read because it's uh, like a, um, 
weekly affirmations and um, lower lifestyle practices that you can do one thing a week so that you're building, right? But when I wrote this book and I was doing these practices, um, I remember thinking like, um, maybe I can show the book if I could take this thing off. But now, uh, effects, how do I, look at there, me looking like I know what I'm doing and I'm an expert. Okay, so here's, here's the book. It is called Manifesting Your Own Crazy Beautiful Life by me. <laughs> And um, so it has 52 life practices in there. And each week there's four affirmations. And it's, it's simple, easy read. You work through it as sort of like a workbook. And each of the practices build on the other. And they're designed to raise your frequency. Where I was energetically when I was writing this, when I was needing this. So I wrote this after I was needing it, but where I was when I was needing these practices and I was fine tuning these practices, um, some of these practices I don't use anymore. Why? Because my, my set point is it, it's not even necessary. <laughs> it's not necessary. They're very, very good if that's where you are. Like some things like rebounding, I'm going to do that for fucking life, right? For eating high, higher vibrational foods, um, definitely. I'm going to do those things for life. But like I said, do I get to the point where I'm doing power stances? Not so much anymore. Unless it is sort of like a unconscious thing. Power stances are um, when your vibration, uh, no, it's not in Goddess University, it is on Amazon, um, and the link is in my bio to all my books, or if you wanna get the PDF version of it, you can go to the Goddess Shop, and that link is in my, my bio too. Thanks for reminding me. But, um, so a power stance, when your energy is low and you're feeling shitty, and you don't really have it in you to, you know, oh, life is going to get better because shit just sucks right now. What can you do? You can take a power stance. So men typically take a power stance like this and they sit wide open, legs open, arms open, right? And they're, they're here. This opens you up. And for whatever reason, it opens you up and, um, it shifts, it, it will create a shift if your energy is low. The uh, Wonder Woman with your hands on your hips and standing, you know, feet hip width apart, it actually um, opens you up too. And so do I do power stances anymore? No, like because my set point and my frequency is high enough to where that's not a practice that I need. So everything doesn't work for everybody. You really do have to find practices that work for you where you are and be okay with leaving some of those practices as you, you know, move forward. And then sometimes all hell breaks loose when you are really about to do, you know, a major jump, there's going to be some type of ascension and you may have to go back to the basics. You know what I mean? And that's okay too. You, wherever you are, understand that, um, you are where you are and it's okay. And where you are and how you, how you maneuver things is always going to be different than somebody else. So somebody, um, a few weeks ago, maybe last month, somebody jumped on and said, hey, I got your book, Goddess Codes. I used the code. I made $2,000 um, in a couple of days. I think she said in like 24 hours on two different occasions using the Goddess Codes in your book. And then somebody sent me a message and was like, well, why is it not working with me for me? Right. So that's when I went into explaining that. It depends on where you are energetically. What work have you done? What beliefs have you released? She had no resistance to, I'm going to write this code and money is going to come. She believed it and the money showed up every time and she's still doing it, right? Um, but if you write the code, but you believe that you're not deserving of money, the money will eventually show up. It's just going to take longer because it's got to work through and weave through all of your disbeliefs, all of your, all of that other crap. So finding the work, the work is 
getting into a better feeling place. You can't get into a better feeling place with negative beliefs. So part of that work is changing your belief system so that you can feel better about what you desire. You don't get what you think about. You get how you feel about what you think about. So if you want a car, but you don't feel like you can have it, you will not manifest a car. If you think... <laughs> So one of the things I used to be really good at, and I probably still am, I just don't have to do it as often, is manifesting houses and places to live, right? So if you say, I'm going to manifest a house, but your belief is, I can only manifest a house when I have all the money I need. I mean, technically, is that really like a manifestation? I mean, because you already have the money, so like there's really no work in it, right? <laughs> there's no miracle in it, there's no surprise in it, you got the money, you pay for it, you get it. That's not really the same way, or the same thing. But uh, the book has the codes, yes. Now, this one doesn't. This is not, Goddess Codes, has the codes. <laughs> this one has um, lifestyle practices for manifesting. Um, can you manifest for others? Yes, you can, but you wanna be careful about that and how you go about it because you don't wanna infringe on other people's you know, free will. It, it creates a weird thing and sometimes it bounces back because the minute you start manifesting for somebody else, it's really like a projection of what you think they should have versus um, allowing them to determine what they should have or what they need. Does that make sense? Um, it's like uh, somebody saying to me, I really believe in the work that you do and I want to buy your book. It's like the last $20 that I have, but I'm going to buy your book because I um cuz I think this is I think this is really going to work for me. And I know cuz they just said this is my last $20. So when I say if I were to say no, don't spend your money if this is your last $20, <laughs> right? What am I reflecting back to them? I'm reflecting back to them lack. I'm reflecting back to them that I don't believe that they can do what they said they can do, which is me, which is get the book and do the work and have the result in the manifestation. So instead of reflecting lack back to them, thank you very much. And you know, I'm here to support you because I know you can do it and I'm reinforcing it. Yes, a job, I do think they should have one. <laughs> So here's the other thing, though, what you you think they should have one. But what is that based on? Right. Based on the fact that society says everyone should have a job. And what does that job really look like? They be manifesting. I can't ask over over the all over the place. They be manifesting. <laughs> so, yeah, but maybe they don't want a job. So no matter how much you think they should have one for whatever and wherever that belief came from, um, they may not believe that they should have a job. And instead of saying, okay, well, I think you're going to be able to do whatever it is that you want to do. And maybe they're, and I'm hypothetically like they're in your space and they don't have a job and you're like, you need to get a job. Well, you could just see them being very, uh, but I can't support everyone in the house. I get it. So here's the thing. They could leave and be in a situation where you don't have to support them and it doesn't have to be through a job. So really what you want to do and where you want to see them is being successful, being independent, right? That's what you want to project. And I would use the codes for that. Um, I would use the codes all over the place for that, right? So uh, projecting them confidence, projecting them uh, 
independence, helping them manifest their dreams, helping manifest their happiness, having more happiness, because all of those things are going to lead to whatever they need to take care of themselves versus um, you having to support everybody. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing about that is that when we, because, you know, you're not the only one in that situation, when we are in situations where we feel like we are having to support everyone, it's a belief system, right? Because it's like, if I don't do it, um, then what's going to happen to them? Nothing. Because they have it in them. You, almost your desire or your decision to do it is also telling them that you think they can't. So you manifest for you freedom. You manifest for you ease. You manifest for you um, less responsibility. You know, those types of things. And then, and, and focus, right? Because I don't know if you were here when I was talking about that. What you focus on expands. So if you're focusing on, um, <laughs> I'm paying for everything, I'm paying for everything, I'm paying for everything, you will continue to pay for everything. Absolutely, no doubt about it. So if you are using those lofty questions and you are shifting your focus to the fact that um, <laughs> my kids are, or my family or friends or whatever are independent and they're taking care of themselves and it's amazing and my life is so easy and I can cover everything, right? So needed clarification on, yes, 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 but I like making the mortgage payment. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, so if it's about making the mortgage payment, then you focus on the fact that it's paid, how easy it's paid, how effortlessly it is, it's paid right instead of like um it needs to be paid it's uh not paid i'm not getting help right isn't it so nice that the mortgage is paid effortlessly every month isn't it so nice that you don't have to stress ever ever again because your mortgage is always paid like you could just say you know it is so amazing and you can tap this in if you know the eft points it is so amazing that the mortgage is paid effortlessly every month and the thing about it is that it gets easier and easier month after month it gets easier and easier to pay the mortgage every month it's easier and easier I have so much help. Money comes from places I just didn't even expect. Sometimes I don't even have to put my own money into the, <laughs> to the mortgage because the mortgage just gets paid. Like everything is always paid and it's so easy. And guess what? I get to enjoy my life more and I get to spend time with my loved ones and nobody has to be stressed. Isn't it? Yes. Isn't it so, so nice? It always happens and it's so nice that, yeah, there will be excess exactly so you get into that energy try an EFT session just around that to shift your energy um, that works a lot um, and it's really really effective but you've got to shift your energy it's gonna be okay right and even if that's what you're tapping into and there's a moment of panic then you tap, right? I am where I am and it's okay and I'm safe and I love myself and I love everyone else and I take full responsibility for myself and I've got me. It's going to be okay. And then you start feeling and thinking into the other things so that um, the energy shifts. And when you first feel that of relief, Know that manifestation is happening. That's the first manifestation. It's the shift in how you feel. And then you do the things to keep you there all day long. And so maybe that lasts for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And then you've got to go right back. And that's okay. Just tap a little bit more. And keep doing it. And then eventually you won't have to do it as often because it'll be your set point and things will start to happen. And people will gift you and stuff that was owed to you. And, you know, some odd reason you've overpaid taxes and all kinds of stuff will happen. It will show up. It will show up for you. 
most definitely. Billionaire Empress. That's a nice name. So, do we have any more questions? We made it to 13,000 likes, y'all. I am so appreciative of that. That's awesome. What's this day of the week? Friday? Yeah? Everybody's out paying. Hey, <laughs> how are you doing? Um, everybody else is out partying. Or maybe I'm not, um, I don't know. What do they do? The people who, um, who like, are they like pretending to be robots? I, I just, listen, there's a job out there for everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe they're all watching night stuff. But, yeah. So, I would definitely say, um, just do the stuff that makes you happy. Right? Do the stuff that makes you happy. Why? Because when you're happy, uh, your vibration is high. You let go of resistance. So, bring more joy into your life. That will help with your manifestations. That's going to help uh, with your frequency. It's going to help raise your frequency. And um, it's going to shift you into bigger and better things. But know that there's always going to be contrast. You, we have to have the contrast. We would not be happy without contrast. Why? Because it's the contrast that lets us fine tune our desires. You got to have some contrast. Like you got to say, oh, I want this and then get this and be like, oh, hell no. I didn't mean it like this. Like I meant it like that. You know, like that's like a man. That's like a woman. One of my first clients manifesting a man and she just was really crazy about hair. And she was like, he's got to have a nice full head of hair. And at the time I was probably like in my 30s. So, you know, she was probably my age. So I felt like she was an older woman, but whatever. <laughs> So she was like, I need him to have a nice full head of hair. And then she met this really great guy. But like, yo, this dude was hairy, like all over his back, his arms, his people watching cosplay. <laughs> um, like it was she was like, he's so nice, but I can't I can't when he took his shirt off. Like it was awful. Right. So <laughs> that happening allowed her to fine tune what her desire was like she wanted somebody that just had a nice head of hair right you didn't have to over she didn't have to overdo it she didn't have to over you know stimulate the whole situation well, i don't know if it's a knee but it feels like i should have one you should have one of what uh it feels like i need a job for stability but I'm good and passionate about so many other things. So what I would do in that case is dive deep into why it feels like it's a need. Do you want one? I mean, do you want a job? Because here's the thing. If you wanted a job, jobs are easy to get, right? Um, jobs are, most jobs are not a place where people who want to express their creativity should be because that's not really what it does in case you but sometimes you find a perfect job maybe if you listed the types of things that you needed in a job and then only looked for those things if you really believe that you should have a job excuse me um if you really believe that having a job is going to fulfill you and sustain you and that seems easier then do that do it in your own way, right? Get clear on the type of job you're willing to take. But if you are wanting a job because someone else said, I don't want a traditional job at all, right? And I do want stability. So then you create the stability, right? You create the stability. Do work on your root chakra. And what does stability give you? How does stability feel? Uh, someone asked me today if I liked working at my job and my response was no, right? Like, listen, <laughs> I'm about, I was about to go left because I was like, anything that has the word job in it, but let me, let me stay focused. Stability, health care, and a pension is a golden leash. So that is all relative, right? Because you can have health care without a job 
a regular nine to five job. You can have stability without a regular nine to five job. You can have some retirement money and things like that without a nine to five job, depending on your belief system. And if it, if it is that you don't want the traditional thing, then you can create those things in a non-traditional setting. You just have to shift your belief system and stand firm, but you can create that. Those things, and here's the truth. Here is, here's a really great scenario, right? When something comes up in my life and I need more money, I make more money. I ask for more money. More money can come in. I create a new container. I do whatever I need to do because I need it and I need it now. Someone else in my life has a nine to five and they feel like they could not not have a nine to five because they need that stability. But how many times has this person lost their shit at work and lost their job? You only got one more paycheck. How is that really stability? Is that really stability? I don't see that as stability. <laughs> the minute I do something you don't like, you can tell me to go home and never come back. Where's the stability in that? So stability is really comes from you, right? It comes from you and how you feel what is and when you are manifesting stability outside of a traditional job what does that feel like you probably need to do some clearing um work on it right but what does it feel like you've got to tap into what does stability feel like what does stability mean to you and what does it feel like so stability means um, you need to have this much money in the bank. You need to have this da, 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 equals a trap. Yeah. Um, you just accomplish those things, right? But again, it is about your belief system because most people do what? They go, okay, I'm going to set a budget. <laughs> I'm still working on that, that, this planner. So don't ask me about it, Camille. Um, I'm going to set a budget and then based on how well first based on how much money this is how much money I get every month and now I'm going to figure out how I can pay all of these things and do all of these things within this money and anything that is not covered by this money I can't do or I'm gonna have to put it in the next pay period or bleh, right that to me is planning and budgeting from the energy of lack you plan and you budget from the energy of lack. This is all I got. This is all I got. And uh, I need to figure out how to pay everything and do everything with this. And if this don't cover it, I can't do it until next time. That is from a place of lack versus this is everything that needs to be paid. This is everything that I want to do. This is how much it cost. And now I am going, you knew I was coming. Yes, I did know. And now I'm going to allow these things to be paid. I'm going to allow the money to show up. I'm going to create the containers and extra avenues and it's going to be fun. And I'm always taken care of and I get to do the things that I love and I get to have the things that I want and I don't have to have a life of this or that. I get to have a life of this and that. And those things become your belief system. It doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen very quickly, right? I want to live a life of this and that, not this or that. I want to live a life of ease. I want to live a life of joy. I want to enjoy my life. I want, I want to get to the place, to the point in my life where I can give a million dollars away every year. So you build the belief. Part, one of the ways is just that kind of ranting like I just did, right? Because that shifted my energy a little bit. Like, yeah, I do remember I want to be able to give away a million dollars every year. So um, it changes and it starts to change your belief. And then things start to come in. And then you have in, my, in the book, one of those life practices I was talking about is a book of proof, right? Because when I first started, I needed to remind myself, hey, yo, bitch, you can do this and you've done it. 
right? Because when I, it really did shift the energy. Yeah. And so when sometimes we don't praise ourselves and give ourselves enough attention and focus and, and high fives and all the shits for the things we do manifest, right? The things that we do call in, the achievements that we do have. And when you start celebrating those things and you create this book of proof that, um, I did it. I asked for it. I received it. I did the work and it came through. I shifted my energy and this happened. I wanted this and it showed up. When you start looking at that, it's like you build your confidence and you realize like, yes, I can do this. I've done it before. When you come up against something and you're like, I'm not sure, but you have this written down in your journal. Yes, I can do it because I've done it before. Having the book of proof, um, is is life changing in the beginning especially in the beginning because you need to build your confidence uh we all have to realize that we have always been taken care of right and we're always manifesting you're manifesting all the time the bad shit happening to you is still you manifesting it's just you manifesting shit you don't want i like my job i'm good at it but supervisors with their heads up their root chakra right but here's the thing, what you focus on expands, right? So if you focus more on how much you love your job and all of the opportunities that your job affords you, like paying the mortgage, right? Um, and all of the things that are awesome about that job and all the things you get to create and express because you are in that job, you never know those supervisors may get promotions they may get fired they may find new jobs and move out of your way because if you're not a vibrational match for them they don't show up they have to go somewhere somewhere anywhere but they go and when that happens you write it down right so then you can go back and remember like hey i loved my job but i didn't like being around these people and these people are gone so, um, I kind of went on a rampage there, but <laughs> that's how you shift your energy. That's how you manifest. Um, second to, uh, the power stance as being one of those real, real simple ways to help you shift your vibration. Um, it's the goddess codes. Uh, good rampage though. Thank you. There's motion at the front door oh um it's the goddess codes because sometimes you just don't have it in you sometimes you don't have the time sometimes um your focus is elsewhere sometimes you are the caregiver of many and all you got to do is write the codes write the codes you can spend the time alone but it's not an everyday all day thing um, you can use it in an everyday, all day type of ritual, but, or you can just simply do the work, use the, use the goddess codes and you can memorize and focus on one code and let that be your rant, right? So if you're, um, excuse me, um, trying to manifest something specific, even if it's, uh, an improvement in health or, um, so to calm down stress, right? So it's zero five, uh, five zero five six one. So if you're stressed and you have been trying to reduce your stress, when you feel your stress going up, you know, there's things you can do. Like I made the energy healing video where you can tap, right? Um, here. So the code for to calm down and reduce your stress is zero five space five zero space five six one so the space is sort of like a um is a pause right so zero five five zero five six one is how you'd say it zero five five zero five six one so you would say it like that but you could focus on that you can meditate with that you can chant that right you're bringing the peace in right? Um, if it was, you just needed, you know, new love in your life, you get that code, you do that type of thing. So sometimes when I am in what I perceive to be a bigger manifestation, and I start to, to get antsy, I use the codes to 
to bring me out of doubt, right? That's what I use to kind of, when I say you gotta keep deciding all day, every day. So I use, I will use the code and shift in and shift out and, and to keep me from going way left and then I'll go into the codes until I can feel that I've finally matched that frequency and things calm down. But also because the numbers themselves are frequencies when you get it and it's it shifts everything it doesn't just occupy your mind for the moment it will actually cause you to have a full energetic shift right hey everyone if you missed the beginning of this live be sure to catch the replay yeah thanks camille the replay is available um on youtube and you can also get it if you have a free get the free goddess um visiting goddess membership and goddess university all the replays are there every time i do a live i put the replays there um all of these codes that i'm mentioning will also uh be listed in there so you don't have to um, remember anything is there a code for manifesting respect in general like respect from another person or more like self-respect You want respect from someone else. Um, I don't know it right off. I'm going to see if I can find it while I'm sitting here. But also, here's the thing about... <laughs> so when you want respect from other people, that's still like a level of assertion, right? When you... When you love yourself, when you respect yourself, the world follows. So when you are wanting something, the, everything in our environment is a reflection of us on some level, some aspect of our lives. So what you're wanting from someone else is more likely a reflective signal to you that you are not respecting, your, respecting yourself on a certain level. So I'll give you an example like... Um, so you've got somebody in the house and they don't respect your space right um maybe they're always in your space they're moving your stuff they're doing their whatever whatever and it's bothering you you feel disrespected so there's two things there they could be moving your stuff and messing with your stuff um for a different reason because we assign we assign reasoning and belief to everything right so they could be moving it because they think that they're helping you clean up and in fact they're agitating the hell out of you but when i say it's a reflection sometimes people not respecting us is a clear indication that we are not respecting ourselves by setting the necessary boundaries we don't set the boundaries because we want them to set the boundaries for us. So we don't have to say anything. So we don't have to do anything. And here's the reality. You're disrespecting yourself. You're not showing up for yourself. And what happens? You get your vibrational match, right? You become a vibrational match for being disrespected because you're not showing up for yourself <sighs> everything is ultimately about us we are creating everything and i just literally said like you know sometimes even the bad sh even the bad shit in our lives is stuff that we are creating so if you want more respect you've got to show up for yourself in a different way and sometimes that way is setting boundaries don't or leave <laughs> this is the requirements to be here this is what is required of you to have access to me when you show up for you that way right the world follows and then they will have to respect you or they lose access and sometimes you have to allow them to lose access so that you can respect yourself. 
So I hope that helps, but I will look up the code and I will, uh, I'll post it. So I'll do typically like a little picture and I'll just say, you know, this is the goddess code for um, gaining more self-respect or gaining respect from others is what you're looking for. Where's my pen? I'm going to write it down. Yes, to the point. Difficult at work. It's all about it's that that has to be a shift, right? So you say it's a yes to the point, but it's difficult at work. Because I know that there are like work protocols and, and things like that. But it also is about what you focus on. And you could just if you get deep into the focusing of how amazing your job is and how remembering why you wanted this job and all the things that the job has afforded you and will afford you and all of those type of things, you may find a better job. Right. So. But you have to be OK with where you are and focus on only the good of where you are right now what to do to change a core belief. So a core belief, hold on one second. Um, let me see, respect. I just wanna make sure that I get the code respect uh, from others. Yeah, I'll post that tomorrow. So to get, uh, to change a core belief, a belief is simply something that you keep thinking over and over again. It's a thought that you have kept thinking over and over again, right? So to change it, you pick a better thought and you think that over and over again. When you see yourself, you're very welcome, love. Uh, when you see or find yourself going towards the old belief, you remind yourself it's a shift, right? We were just talking about that. And that's when codes work really well, when you can find a goddess code that helps you with a new core belief, because then you can just recite the code. The reason, the other reason that the codes help you in manifesting and in shifting is because there are no words, right? The codes and the frequency of what it is that you're desiring is in the numbers. So there are no words and no thoughts for your subconscious to combat so that that other voice doesn't go, you know, you're trying to get rich and you're saying, you know, I'm a millionaire. And then the thought is like, no, bitch, you're not a millionaire. Like, you don't even have that. You're just saying the code. So you it's let the codes have less resistance. It, it affords you to to uh, manifest and focus and change your vibration with the least amount of resistance because there are no words to be emotional about um, when you are changing. So the codes would be one way, but you have to keep thinking the new thought. A belief is simply a thought that you keep thinking over and over again. And maybe it was told to you when you were little and you bought it, right? Because people sell us shit all the time. And our parents sold us shit that had nothing to do with us. They sold us shit that was about them and not us. And we believed them. And so then we carried it on, right? And uh, sometimes those things are not beneficial for us at all. And so you just have to decide what is the new thought? What is the new belief? And use it as a loft, use a code, use it as a lofty question. Um, so like if your new belief is that um, that has been me. <laughs> so if the new belief is, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a talented pianist, right? And you're practicing and you keep messing up and you're like, oh, I suck at this. I'm never going to be good. But no, that was before. Actually, I'm a great pianist. I may be struggling to learn this, but uh, I'm going to get it and I'm getting better each time. Like you just have to keep shifting. You have to be aware and you have to do the shift. Tell us more lofty questions. You want me to tell you more lofty questions? Where's my book? Mm, where's my book? Um, is Aaliyah up on her loft? Is Aaliyah on her loft? Yeah. Okay. I was, huh, I was going to open my book and, uh, yeah, I can't wait to do my lofty questions in the morning. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to run and grab my book.
I'm not gonna tell y'all all my lofty questions, but they're gonna give me some ideas. <laughs> so this is my, this is not a book you can buy. This is my life book. And so the life book um, about negative beliefs that come from my dad, apparently about myself. Yeah, well, so then you've gotta do some release, right? You've gotta know that when you do the work, right, and you start releasing the emotions. So the first thing I would say is that what are the emotions that, that are associated with those beliefs that you feel like you were told? And I would write down those emotions and then I would go through and release, start releasing all of the emotions, you know, and asking yourself, like, is this ultimately true? And the answer, of course, is no, is no. So if that's not ultimately true, what is ultimately true for me about this? Write that down. Those are your new beliefs. And now these are your new beliefs. You're going to turn them into lofty questions. You're going to find goddess codes that match those beliefs. You're going to put those all over the place. You're going to put them all over your bot bottles. You're going to write them on your, on your arm. You're going to sleep, put them underneath your pillow. You're going to do all of those things and you're going to tap it out and you're going to cry because it's going to come up to the surface and you're going to let it go. You're going to allow it to move through your body, which is one thing that a lot of women, we don't do. We don't let those emotions come up and out and do, do, do. Thank you. I don't know what that was, but, um, <laughs> we don't, uh, we don't move those emotions up through and out. And so we hold on to them and they hurt us even more. So you're going to do, those, when I say do the work, those are the things that I mean to do. You move those emotions up and through and out of the body. You, um, you journal it out. You know, what is it that I'm thinking? Why can't, why do I think I can't have this? Why do I think I can't be this? Why do I think I can't do this? Where did I get this from? Is this true? No, it's not true. But what is true? Okay, well, that's my new belief. How do I support this new belief system? Because you see, if it is true that I can do X, Y, and Z, then I would take that class. If it's true that I can do X, Y, and Z, I would not be carrying the stress. I would be eating better. If this was true, you see what I'm saying? And now you're creating a list of habits that support the new belief system and when you find yourself slipping back, you use a code or you use a practice to bring you back. And eventually, you know, initially it's going to be a back and forth and back and forth. And then it's, it's, you know, slowly to where you have a new belief system, right? And then those things will come back around. We kind of grow in a spiral, upwarding spiral, right? So you come back around to the same topics often are those same subjects, but on a different level. So don't think that it's ever going to go away. It's going to be done. Like you're never going to get it all done. It's never going to be done. There's always going to be more to do. Um, the journey of getting to the next thing is what's supposed to be so much fun. When, okay, wait, I missed some questions here. Hold on. When is it most likely negative? Uh, when it is most likely negative beliefs about himself. So I don't, I don't think I have that in full context. Don't share your lofty thoughts. <laughs> just tell us how to craft your own. I know, but I was, um, I was just sent me a bracelet. Is that what that was? I loved it. Thank you. Um, so what I was saying is that this is a life book, right? So I have a book that and I published mine most people put it in in a um in a binder or whatever right so you divide your life into 12 uh, strategic areas and in those areas you're looking at what is the premise of this area and then you say well what vision do I want for this area of my life and then you craft the vision that you have for the next say five years in this area of your life and then you say, well, what is the purpose of this area of my life? And um, what's the strategy for me to get there? Right. So that's basically what I did. And then once I know what the purpose is, what I want out of this, and I've created this strategy, then I created the questions that um, that support my new belief and the strategy. Right. Oh, you are very welcome, love. So, um, 
and health and fitness. So you could have, you know, questions like, you know, why, um, why am I in better shape than I've ever been in in my life? Uh, why is my skin? I don't know. Why is my hair long? Why are my nails strong? Why um, am I a size three suddenly? You know, like those types of, of questions, because they've got to be around whatever your goal is, right? So why is a good way to start? Because it's like, why is this happening now? Why? <laughs> I am not a size three, girl. Listen, I'm a three times some stuff. Okay, so anyway, um, when you say, well, why is this the way it is? You're saying it is this right now. So why am I so rich? Why am I so happy? Why um, am I so healthy? Why do I have so many friends? Why do I go out all the time and have the best time? Why is every day the best day of my life? Um, why am I so sought after? Why am I such a sought after speaker? Why do I have a wait list for, uh, for people who want to work with me? Um, why do I have the best relationship with my children? Why am I financially free? Why is it that every investment works out for me? Why is everything I touch turned to gold? Why is, you know, so it just goes on, right? Why are all the people in my house so respectful? Why do the people in my home love and respect me? Why do I have the best relationship with the people at work? Why is it that I am the most liked person at work? Why is it, you see what I'm saying? It's so the why brings it into the now and um, it can go on and on and on in all of the different areas. So in my book, I have uh, health and fitness. I have my intellectual life. I have my character, my personal character, which I found initially was really interesting because I really, before this, and this was a couple, oh, four years ago, maybe not quite, um, I had never really set goals and intentions for the development of my personal character. And, uh, it was different, but I really, really highly encourage that. So for my intellectual life, I kind of did that anyway. Um, you want to set intentions and goals for your emotional life, right? Because where do you want to live on the emotional scale? I want to be at love and above. You know, I like to be at love and above. I haven't been in, I haven't done this in years. Oh, <laughs> um, where do you want to be in your emotional life? Why am I emotionally stable? If you feel like you are not emotionally stable, um, where do you want to go in the next five years? Where do you want to be in the next year? But establishing where you want to be emotionally, um, intellectually, how you want your character to develop and the things that you want to do to develop your particular character um, and why that's important to you is definitely something to look at because people want to do business with good people and <clears throat> what is a good person to you, right? With the life book, yeah. Um, what's a good person to you? Uh, you've got uh, parenting, I am trying not to like, you know, totally rant. So also your spiritual life. Right, that's another category. I'm just trying to read all the 12 categories. Um, your love relationship is the next one. Uh, and your parenting, like your relationship, parenting relationship with children. And that was kind of fun, and it actually helped me a lot uh, at Camille Mine's uh, PDF. I made it a YouTube video to watch. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do your social life? I love the rants. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you want to do your financial life, and you want to do your career. Um let me see 
because that's almost all of them. Oh, and then your overall quality of life, right? What is your overall quality of life? Like, where do you want to live? How do you want to live? What is the environment like? Like, how you live and where you live. And that's also for your overall life vision. And then you can do it for five years period of time or 10 years period of time. But um, I use those lofty questions to help me meet uh, and tick off the, the list in my strategy on how I am going to, to get there. So, did I miss any questions? Do we have any other questions? It is almost one o'clock. Why are all the people? She said, since I plan to live to be 120. Girl, you gotta be here longer than that because I plan to be here at least 150. Like, I'm not gonna show signs of getting sick until I'm 150. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I'll definitely be purging the goddess book. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's... Even my babies at this point, you know, they don't want to go outside without their little, you know, their numbers. And um, so typically I put the four, it's four eights, eight, 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 eight for, um, you know, uh, spiritual shielding. So we write them on them and she's like... Oh, she comes like she's got to have her little eights everywhere, her little ankles, and you know what I mean? So uh, it, it, it definitely changes things. It has done a lot for me. Should I continue with relationship with Randy? <laughs> I don't know, honey. Uh, I'm ready to elevate my frequency. Actually, my frequency is definitely elevated. It is. Isn't it amazing? how easy it is to step into your a higher frequency and isn't it amazing how uh you know things that you need to live and vibrate at that frequency just kind of show up to help you expand to help you embody it to help you grow it like that was one of my favorite things that we used to do in the moon circles like when we would do the new moons and full moons and people during the new moon specifically people would say like this is what i'm manifesting right i'm manifesting a new car and then i would just go on a rant about how i see you in your new car and i love all the amazing accessories in your car and how your clothes match and those sunglasses and the fact that the top comes off and you look so fucking amazing people are always staring at you uh wondering who you are because you look like that girl in your brand new car and so it would help them shift into the reality of what it was that they're manifesting um within the circle for that day so uh try that with yourself and it don't and be gentle with yourself it takes a while <laughs> You don't always, you know, uh, you, you cannot always just jump in and, and get to ranting and it feel, feel good. Uh, key chain to manifest a house or a car. Yeah. Camille uses a cheek, a key chain. She uses whenever she gets a key chain. Um, that's when she gets a new house. I feel like I was going to tell you all a story about manifesting a house and I don't know, then it, it went away, but she said, I'm a bit older than you, so 120. <laughs> Ooh, that <don't> trigger. <laughs> Look here. Because I don't want no parts of neither one of y'all being old like <laughs> she, that. Diana says she don't want no parts of either one of us as we get to hit that age. <laughs> Is it true that we should always follow our instincts and passion? Absolutely. So instead of calling it instincts, because I feel like animals are the ones who have instincts, we have intuition. And yeah, because when you are listening to your intuition when you can hear your intuition it means that you are connected to your higher self or source or god or whichever terminology you use but it means you're connected so when you're connected you can hear when you hear it that's where you need to go right and it does take practice but even when i'm teaching uh energy healing your body knows right that was the other video that everybody was like trying to see and i call it like how to know the truth about everything and i was doing energy testing with camille and one of my cousins and how your body even without knowing uh like what i was bringing into their energy fields uh knew instantly if it was good or if it was bad 
right? So if you've ever seen someone use a pendulum to get answers, your body is a pendulum. So when you work on getting connected so right now on my page i've got like i don't know day one through four or so on how to ignite your intuition but the entire series right now is on um my youtube channel so you can go over to my youtube channel and just binge watch the um thanks for the follow uh binge watch the uh the series is like 20 days and each day gives you <coughs> excuse me each day gives you a an exercise to try for that day and you just sort of build on it right so each day you add a new practice to your day i feel like i manifested to have a pet cat although the cat is not exactly mine but the cat came to my life four years ago yeah and that's how it happens right um sometimes you want stuff and some people are trying to give you something else and then by mistake you get exactly what you want <laughs> you know, listen, I thought that for a long time, uh, I really wanted another baby, <laughs> but I was not pleased at the circumstances under which I would have been able to have another baby because I didn't really with the person that was in my life. And yet I ended up with another baby, right? I didn't have a baby, but I got a baby. So literally, like when I tell you I got a baby, like I went to the hospital and they put her in my hands and <laughs> I got a brand new baby like she was days old. And so uh, sometimes when and I'm looking at her like, what the hell is going on? Like, I have to remember I manifested that. How to manifest a good relationship. Only focus on the good stuff right if you are focused on the good in them then that's how they will show up for you if they are unable to show up in the way that you are holding the vibration for them they will leave you will not be able to align um you'll be trying to make plans they'll be too busy you show up their car breaks down like all of those types of things and that is your sign that this is somebody that you're not actually in alignment with that's not your divine selection <laughs> as uh florence what's her name shivel shivel shin would say what do you mean uh what do i mean by not your divine selection Like, not your divine selection. Like, if you guys are not able... So, when you raise your frequency, if that person cannot show up and, and meet you... So, what happens is, um, you know, you're working on living and being at the highest level that you can, right? And so, you're going to keep doing that. And you're going to keep... Because you want the best possible relationship, you're going to raise your vibration. And you're going to look at this other person and say, I love you because you respect me. I love you because you show up for me. I love you because um, you are empathetic. I love you because you're gentle and kind and da 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 da, -da. There's always tension uh, when there's not an alignment in, t in tension. Yeah. Um, so you're listing all of these things right about this person and i would suggest that you journal them and how wonderful they are and how they show up for you and how they hold space for space for you and how you know um you have such a good time together and you laugh together and you love eating with them and you love doing all the things now you can do this even if you don't actually physically have a person in your um, in your life and you're just trying to manifest a person in a good relationship but if you have a person and you're trying to make that relationship better then you focus on you know they're so funny you love the way they smell and you love the way they look and they have the cutest walk and the blah 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 blah, blah, blah right so you're doing all of these things and so that's raising your vibration and what happens is that's the only way that this person can show up for you Meaning that's the only way that you guys can share space and spend time together is if they're showing up the way that you see them. If, 
how you're seeing them is not truly who they are or who they want to be, they will not show up. So you'll make plans. They won't be able to make it. They'll ask you, can you come? And then something will happen and you're not going to be able to make it. And you'll keep missing each other because you can't uh, connect vibrationally is what I mean. And when Diana says, be careful manifesting people, right? You want to manifest the energy of that, right? So you could completely take it off of that person and just write all of those things. Like, you know, this person is so amazing and we do this together. We do that together. We have the same sense of humor. We love the same shows. We um, love doing these activities and people adore them. My family loves them, blah, 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 blah. And then a person that meets that will will actually show up. <laughs> she said, man, listen. So, um, so that's another way, right? be specific yes lord be specific so um i don't know this was like seven years ago eight years ago uh camille and i tried this we're sitting at my one of the tables in the kitchen and uh i don't know what she was reading but we're talking and making a list right and i'm like really just like going through my head and he's gonna be this and he's gonna be tall and he's gonna be blah 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 literally like 24 hours later we go to the bookstore and we weren't in the bookstore it started because of a dude in the bookstore so it was close to valentine's day or some weird shit like that what holiday was it i don't know why i feel like it wasn't valentine's day but it was but anyway um the guy maybe it was her, the guy who was ringing us up at the bookstore was talking about this amazing gift that he made for his girlfriend right um and I was like, that's so amazing. And we started talking about how it would be so nice to have a man in our lives who responded that way and did things that way. And maybe it was Valentine's Day and who knew us well enough to be able to make something that was crafted. Like, you know, so we kind of got into that and it it then enveloped. And I was just talking about, like, the man I would really like to have in my life. And then the next day, we went thrift shopping. And um, somewhere in there, I was like, I'm going to talk to the next man. Uh, no, it wasn't the balloons. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk to the next man who tries to talk to me because, you know, how in the hell am I trying to manifest a man and I won't even speak to one? <laughs> so we go to the thrift store and I'm standing in line. Camille's shopping and he's, you know, he smiled at me and I smiled back and whatever. And he ends up getting in line behind me. He are in front of me. Actually, he was in front of me and he checks out. He leaves. Uh, Camille's just looking around. I check out. I'm talking to her. He leaves the store, comes back in, and asks me for my phone number. So immediately Camille was like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I was like, no, it's okay. So he follows us to the car. I gave him my number. And she was like, I cannot believe you gave him your number. And I was like, well, I said the next guy who asked me for my number, I was going to give it to him. So turns out, though, when we kind of get a week in, like the guy on sure did talk to this stranger. I sure did. And all the things that we had listed that night uh, when we were at the table, this man ticked off. Now, when Camille said be specific, mm, I left some stuff out, right? Um, <laughs> she said, I always say no when men talk to her. But yeah, I left some stuff out. He was a nice guy or whatever, but I did leave things out. But he fit the bill like and it was more so because we got into the feeling right he checked all the boxes and we did it from a feeling place and a fun place and a kind of giggly happy faith place and the man showed up right he just he literally showed up and approached me and asked me for my number in the energy of me 
making a commitment to myself that I would give the guy my phone number. So, which I had not been doing. So prior to that, nobody could have asked me for my phone number and got it. So it, it was something that we manifested together in that energy. And it's always easier when you have someone that you can do that type of work with and play with and kind of have fun with. But, um, and we were drinking, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. But, um, playing with someone, someone who can get, help you get into the vibe is helpful, but it's not necessary. If our intention is saying to be lazy and don't do anything, should we follow? Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, there's days I'm a mother of eight and I have five grandchildren, okay? So, um, um, there are days that I get up and I just be like, fuck this shit. I'm going back to bed. I I'm going to start over. Like, I, I go back to bed and just start the fuck over. <laughs> if there's days when it's like, oh, I, um... I just don't want to do anything. I may get up. I may uh, change my clothes, freshen my room up, the whole thing. And I then prepare to stay in the bed the rest of the day. Like everybody got what they need. I need you to do this because this is what I need to do, which is just lay here. Right. Got the computer set up. If I sh so choose to. Hi. How you doing? Um, the eyes of truth. <laughs> Um, and, and I, I do what I'm guided to do when I don't, that is typically when, you know, weird shit happens, um, that I don't want, right. That's when I'm really manifesting the things I do not want, but when I'm following intuition and, and, and it is on me, in me to be still, to be quiet to do nothing. There are times when I have a shit ton of things to do and spirit says, go to bed, lay down, go find a comedy show and watch a comedy show. But I promise you, I will go and watch a comedy show and the next day, everything that I have been trying to do all fucking week gets done in a day because what I really needed to do was take a break and step away, right? And it all gets done. It always gets done. And the stuff that doesn't get done didn't really need to be done because I believe in divine timing. So it is about the shift of your own belief system that will allow you to do that. That uh, That's very much what happened when I met my husband. I decided what I stop accepting. Yeah, I mean, and there you go the power of making a decision, right? You decide and it shows up, right? You make a decision about something, the world follows. The person you're looking for pops up. Everything that you want comes to you easily and effortlessly. I love your energy and I'm glad I found you. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate you guys' appreciate you guys's, um, energy and your time and, um, you know, I could talk for hours, which clearly I do, but <laughs> uh, did I get all the questions answered? Hi, everyone. Uh, what is that, Peach? How you doing? Um, so, okay, how many people are in here? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do this really quick, and then I'm going to... I'm going back to my, my, what you call it. Tell me this is not the cutest outfit ever. I've got to get one of those. Um, meanwhile, that's not it. Here we go. Okay, so we started here. Should we follow our intuition? Um, even if it guides to do bad things or hurt someone, that's not your intuition, darling. If it's telling you to hurt people, to do anything that is bad, mischievous, that's not your intuition. Your intuition is uh, the message that you're getting 
from source, right? So source would never, would never, never, never. So if you are feeling like you are being guided to do something malicious or what have you. Now, if you're talking about like out of anger, um, when you have those thoughts, like you want to do something, you know, mean, nasty, vicious, whatever, whatever, you're disconnected, right? That's the, that's the time and the space that that comes in. It means that you're disconnected. Because if you were connected to source, um, you more than likely, the more connected you are, the more that you'll understand that you are, you would have a, you would see them the way source sees them, right? So uh, you would maybe feel a little sorry for them. Maybe you would be forgiving. You would understand their perspective, although it is not yours. You would respect their space. You would understand that they are in your space because you were a vibrational match to that. And you would simply then work on changing your own vibration so that you were no longer a match to the stuff that you didn't want versus hurting the people that were around you. So I hope that <laughs> that clarified it. So we started this. This is the uh, tonight. If you guys are make some moon water, put some water outside and make some new moon water like do that. Please, 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 please make moon water tonight. Put it out. Bring it in first thing in the morning and um, put whatever your favorite goddess code is on it or any of those codes that I gave you guys tonight. Put them on those water bottles tomorrow when you bring them in or your water jugs. And um, that was nice. Uh, <laughs> and then you are sipping on that vibration, right, for the next, um, the next few weeks and uh and manifesting all the while so we're in the new moon there is a portal happening on the 7th and 8th i am doing a group ritual on the 7th and 8th if you would like to be included uh do we put our crystals out yes you can put your crystals out to get cleansed absolutely you can do that tonight tomorrow and the next day and what kind of water um alkalized spring water I watched her energy protection video and truly appreciate the explanation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so if you guys want to join the, per the portal, it's $7 via Cash App. You need to put your email in there and then I send you um, the link so that you can join uh, that group. I'm going to do that work live. I'm going to do a meditation with you guys and tomorrow in that um, in the chat. I'm going to explain to you like some stuff that you all can do to help kind of fuel your manifestations. And like I was saying earlier, when you have more than one person focused on what it is that you, um, I don't think so. Diana, do you do Venmo? Cause I don't. Yeah. yeah. She needs somebody wants your Venmo. If you put it in there, uh, for the portal, but, um, so we do, we're going to do a meditation that night. I'm going to teach a little bit about some quantum jumping and um, put some energy on your manifestations coming true. We're going to do a three-day candle burn, and I kind of sit and pray with candles for the three days that we're doing that. So the candle candles will be lit for like the 7th, the 8th, and the 9th. And um, I don't know, I'll teach you all the manifestation stuff that night. We've got like about an hour class. I can't read the back. Ah, there you go. So this particular portal that's coming up for the 7th and the 8th, uh, and there's two more later in the month, are about focusing on self-acceptance and exploring your sexual sensations, as well as releasing old beliefs and seeing yourself in a new light, right? So the burn ceremony lasts for three days, um, and then you can attend um, via Goddess University. So you get the free membership in Goddess University and I send you the link and you get into that uh, private space for this particular service. Um, and my, if you're going to do it via Cash App, my Cash App is in the, um, in my profile. So, uh, and then Diana put the Venmo down there. Uh, if you'd like to join via Venmo and just make sure that we've got your uh, email. Okay, so in this portal, which happens Sunday night, 
we're going to talk about manifesting quantum uh, jumping using water and uh, some other manifesting techniques. I'm going to share with you some specific codes to use for this uh, for the rest of the month to kind of uh, jumpstart your manifesting your manifestations. And it's going to have a three day candle burn on it. This is unheard of. Usually <clears throat> my less ex my least expensive candle services are usually like fifty five dollars but uh this is a, a whole new portal and uh it's really about kind of stepping into that sensual feminine energy reconnecting to your feminine energy so this is the start and then i've got a two-day class that will be coming up and i'll be talking about that um also talking about that on monday but um and it is available if you go to the link in my bio and click on goddess university you'll see all the classes so the two-day class is there um as well and all the information about the class is on there um so that is it let me see make sure um and what kind of water yeah like drinking water yes you're drinking water um spring water is alkalized spring water is my preference right but literally here's the thing <laughs> water has memory so if you don't have spring water if you all you have is tap water if you um or you have distilled or mm, i don't know whatever other kind of water there is take the labels off if you can and let them get charged right it's going to heighten the crystal formation the memory and the life-giving force of the water if you do not know, I am going to put, I'm going to put two because Dr. Imorimoto has a lot of books about the secret life of water and basically the different messages that he put on water and then took pictures of it and how different crystals form. There's a woman right now doing work with water where she's freezing it in her regular freezer and literally she can hold a pitcher over water and then stick it in the freezer and that image is imposed on the ice crystals that are forming on top of the, the ice so <clears throat> on top of the water so you have to know that water holds memory water holds frequency you can change the frequency of your water um, with your goddess codes and with your words and with the the moon energy and all of those things but we're going to talk about that um during the the portal ceremony how to do it again. Uh, I don't think I have alkalized water. I do have spring water. Okay, so I answered that. Any live events planned? Uh, yep, we, I don't have my, we've got a live event planned at, in August, let me say, on the 23rd. The 23rd, 24th, 25th, I will be in North Carolina. We'll be doing a live event. Um, we're going to be doing energy healing. So I'm going to be teaching you um, how to do the work on yourself to heal like chronic pain and different types of um, issues like that. Uh, people who have headaches, people who have back aches, people who are just, you know, dealing with um just very specific elements we're going to be going over that <coughs> excuse me uh we're going to be doing goddess code demonstrations we're going to be doing some chakra chakra work uh that type of thing you said how to do it again um i'm not sure exactly what you're talking about And then that weekend, I'm also going to be doing, I think that's the weekend of, is it the full moon, new moon? Either way, we're going to be doing some midnight, not midnight, but moonlight yoga. So if you live in that Charlotte area, uh, be looking out for that. What is a goddess code? Um, is this for the collective portal service? What I'm talking about, sorry, you missed it. The Yeah. We're going to be talking about manifesting. I'm going to give you some codes. I'm going to talk about using the water for your manifestations and things like that. Uh, so goddess codes, they are numbers that have been channeled that have a frequency that when combined in a specific way, um, they evoke healing. 
change and physical manifestations. So this started with a person named uh, a Russian, I believe he was Russian, um, man named, uh, can't think of his first name, but his name last name is Grabobor. And so he was channeling these codes and you know everything is numbers and the universe is, is all comprised of numbers and the the vibration of those numbers so they started using these numbers and discovered through scientific testing that um they could heal they could heal people um and they could make major changes in reality so his set was the first set and then over time other people have uh, channel codes and scientists have tested codes and so my book is a combination of codes that have been tested that I do know work a lot of them are grab a boy but not all of them and and right now the book is in PDF the book is going to print and there will be almost 2,000 or more codes in the printed version and those codes come so this from multiple uh, sources but they also have way more uh, physical element codes like for very specific diseases um, will be added to the to the print version uh, she might mean how can it be done she wants explanation on how to do it I'm guessing You can join the collective portal through yes and you can join the collective portal. so the collective portal no the way that you get into this portal is uh seven dollars via cash app my cash app is in the bio um unless diana you put it uh you can't pin it if you type it i'll pin it you can join there it's seven dollars and you put your um your email in the notes section and then you get emailed the link so you can get in there and you can get in there right now and chat with the people who've already joined and like I said tomorrow I'll be in there putting in more information for you uh, I was talking about the last person's comment um, <clears throat> When she said how to do it again. Yeah. I don't know. Pin this comment. That's locked too. I can't even pin it. Anyway, there's the there's the <laughs> there's the cash app. It's also in the link in my bio, so you can send it at any time. It's seven dollars and you just need to include your email. And then within uh the day we'll send you uh the link to join. <clears throat> and then in there, I will go live actually in there in the app in that particular space. She asked how to do it. And I was just saying she might be asking for that reason. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Like, I'm missing something because I'm not sure what she, she was asking how to do what. That's what I, I missed that. Like, I'm not sure when she said how to do it again, you know, because I started on my ranting and then I, I missed like what she may have said it while I was talking but I kept talking and I didn't know yeah I missed it too so I'm not sure what part when she said how to do it yeah because I was just running my mouth so anyway I'm going to hop off of here I appreciate you guys you know uh being here sharing your energy with me chatting with me and you know thank you for your time um, I'd love for you to join if you feel called and otherwise I will see you guys uh, probably again tomorrow um, for the most part during this week I will be on uh, 10 p.m. thank you um, wow 20 20,000 likes <laughs> no cash up um, if you send a message uh, do you have what is it that you just Venmo would be the other option or apple pay thank you simone all right you guys have a blessed night and if you want to see this replay it will be on youtube and in goddess university
I put them all in there. 